with all due respect. <laughs>
high school, or actually, I want to say, I, I remember looking at a photo um, of my junior year, and I looked like I was in eighth grade, dude. I looked like I was that in eighth grade. That is a soccer so, player through and through. Uh, yeah. A hundred percent. So I, um, I, I grew up, actually, as, an, as a military brat. So I started um, playing soccer in England um, at four when I started school. Um, it was probably my worst sport, but it was my favorite sport. So it took over everything when I, it overlapped in high school. So it was like, I quit baseball, you know, I quit basketball. Um, and I, and I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I, I was, um, I was talented at all of those things, you know, um, but I just, I did it every single day, how I grew up. There was like, that's all I did, which I feel like is completely different to, you know, what we're coaching kids now. Um, like I lived eating, like I, there was nothing I did. I almost didn't go to school. I did sports so much. That's what I felt like. But um, I went to my girlfriend's practice um, right when I graduated high school. And I saw my best friend that I grew up with, another girl that I went to high school or I, that I also grew up with. And they were in there coaching. And I looked at my best friend. And I'm like, dude, you're in here flipping all of these females. And you haven't told me about this? <laughs> as my girlfriend's as, as my girlfriend's over there tumbling, so I'm like, okay, it's a little risky. Um, but I I got a I literally got a job that day. Um, I got a job that day, um, which I was grateful for because I was working overtime as a busboy that summer. It was not fun. So and I was and I'd always wanted to be a cheerleader. To be honest, my sister was a cheerleader. Um, I had been around it, but again, I wasn't big. I was like, there's no way I can hold these girls up, and I was right. There was no way I could hold those girls up. But I wanted to. I always wanted to learn how to flip. Um. And that, I think that was probably the most enticing thing is I want to, I, I was like, I got to learn how to flip. That's so cool. And honestly, I got a job that day and that summer I showed up, I've never in my life ever showed up for a job as early as I have and stayed as late as I did for zero pay. Um, they obviously paid me for my hours that I worked, but I, I was hook, line and sinker immediately and was just blessed to meet the right people um, that have really steered me and helped mold me um, to be able to have a career um, you know, for the last 26 years, 26 years. So wow. that's incredible. I and got you, into it the, sum, the, the summer of 1998. And you stayed at that cheerleading place and it just grew to where you started doing PR. Court. Now, can you tumble, Donnie? Can you tumble? I can. I can. There's a, oh, if you scroll down my, wow. if you scroll down my Instagram, we're going to have to. There's probably me yeah. throwing a, there's <laughs> me throwing a double, a, a double full, which is, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. Um, I was a little, a little hefty at the time, yeah. um, but it's, it's a, it's a backflip with a double twist. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's actually at Randy, it's at Randy Dickey's gym. Yeah. So every once in a while I'll get out there. I did a back tuck the other day and I felt like I almost snapped my ankles. Oh, um, yeah. But I just, so I just started, I just started coaching again. I've been doing full-time choreography for the last, since 2017. Now I stepped back into the coaching arena um, and I just love doing stuff for the kids. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah. oh, let me throw a back tuck. And I can't, I, in my, I've never in my whole entire life actually ever froze up in the middle of it. And my body, like, I felt like I lost every bit of like muscle strength or anything. And I'm about to go and I'm like, you can't stop here in front of the kids. And I felt like I almost landed like a tripod with my two feet and my head in the ground, yeah. but <laughs> uh, I, I saved it. So I can still flip. It's just not great. So you, so you get into that gym you start working with teams. I mean, obviously you're not just spotting. How does that transition into choreography? Like, how does that go from, I never cheerlead. I'm just spotting girls at some point. Now I'm actually choreography. Walk us through like you're spotting girls. All of a sudden you're doing choreography to now you're, you're traveling around coaching. Like talk us through that timeline. All right. So <clears throat> growing up, I did kind of have a, a, I had some rhythm. Um, I like to, you know, think I could, I was teaching myself how to break dance, but I later learned how to break dance and realized that I was nowhere close, but <laughs> I at least, I at least had rhythm. Again, I had an older sister watching them dance and things like that. So I, I picked up on some things, but when I started cheer, I, I literally what I started as was a spotter. I stood on the floor um, and my job was to make sure no one touched the floor. They were, they were throwing girls up in the air. They were holding stunts. Uh, the coaches were coaching and I was spotting. And that was that follow, um, you know, fast forward to the next summer. Uh, I, I got a job hired. Um, I got hired on as a summer camp instructor for cheerleaders of America. And this was my first experience with actually, actually doing cheerleading, doing motions, um, teaching stunts, because up to that point, I'd really only spotted. 
so the teaching aspect was still very foreign to me. So that actually taught me how to teach, which I was really fortunate. Again, um, some of those people that I ended up meeting in this company um, now are still in the sport. They're world champion choreographers. They're world champion coaches. And so when I say I was blessed to meet the right people, I mean, I couldn't have met any people that were any better um, at that time. Um, and even now, again, you know, Florida was at like really the, the top of the game. Like there's a couple of states that are great. So back to the timeline. So I, I got to um, I, I was terrible, by the way, when I caught this job, I was I was so bad at motions. I was um, I was very green learning the choreography, remembering the choreography. I, it was really, really bad. Um, but I just continued to work at it. It was something that I was very passionate about. Um, so I just, the next summer, then I, they, once they kind of noticed that I could, like, I was picking up on things and then I was working and I was trying to prove my, um, you know, myself, my, my boss at the time. So I'm still at the same gym. This is actually where I'm at now in Melbourne, Florida. And they're not around anymore, but they were one of the first all-star programs in the country. I want to say they started around like 87, uh, which all-star cheerleading wasn't even really a thing. Then they just kind of created it. So I'm, I'm with them for about two seasons. I end up um, meeting a lady who is still a fantastic friend and resource, Glenda Broderick. Um, and I went over to work with her for a little bit and they gave me some more opportunities. I didn't stay there long, it had nothing to do with her. She's absolutely amazing. And I went back to what I just felt was home, which was the gym was called All-Star Rebels. Um, and then I, um, I started, I got into some things that probably slowed my path down a little bit. Um, so I ended up having to move to, I, I, I had to move out of my house for a little bit, actually. Uh, my parents forced me, so <laughs> we could get, with it. I was forced to leave. And I decided <laughs> that I was like, I'm not going to go pay right down the road. So I'm like, I'm going to go and move to Ohio and try to work corporate for this company. Well, that also didn't work because I was still battling the same things. It didn't matter where I was at. I was still just battling them. Um, but during that time, I still was a student of the game. I was still working in cheerleading. Um, I got an opportunity to coach at a gym that was really new, and re but really eager to get good. So that was an opportunity for me for, to just um, excel and start practicing choreography. Uh, luckily, again, it, it just had a lot to do with me meeting the right people. So the hard part was I'd never been in a cheerleading routine. So I could sit there and I could come up with dance moves and I could come up with things that would look cool, but that's still not the same as having, you know, at the time you could have up to 36 people on the floor. So trying to navigate 36 people and make it look really cool. Like think about a marching band at halftime and seeing all these like creative formations and stuff that they do and they never touch each other. They never run into each other. Uh, and, and that's essentially, you know, kind of like what you're doing in cheerleading is a lot of patterns, a lot of visual um, thing, movement on the floor uh, that's appealing to the eye uh, that'll kind of get you engaged. So, you know, I like to look at it where, you know, if someone, if you can impress someone that has nothing, that knows nothing about cheerleading, then you're doing your job, you know, so. Uh, that's me, dude. That's so when I've seen good cheer, yeah. right, when yeah. I've gone to good cheer, yep. um, I have to, and we have a mutual friend, Coach Miss G, right? Miss G is, is at the Man. school. That. She's, she's, dude, if I've ever met a woman, she's like 75. If I've ever met somebody that demands respect when she walks in a room, bro, I am, it's like my mom walks in a room. I'm like, I yep. listen to her. She's smart. She's successful. She's unbelievable. But I told her one time, I said, I don't know what I'm watching, but I know that that group seemed to look better than that group. And that group looked better than that group. I feel like that's the best team. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, why? I go, it was just more appealing to the eye. It looked like their things were harder. It was smoother. I get nervous when I watch cheer competitions because like <laughs> I, I get I get super nervous. I'm not like, everyone not everyone's good. Like so I'm there's like, some dangerous bro, that stuff girl, that happens. That girl's about to hit the floor, right? Like the, that girl, that girl gets thrown up. I don't trust that girl right there. She's gonna hit the floor. We're gonna have an emergency in a second, right? So I get nervous yep. watching because it's kind of like I'm get anxious, right? Um, but you're right. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I know when it looks aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Being around cheer more with what I do, I realize that like these are high listen i don't care what you coach i identify a high level coach right yep. I yeah don't care what you coach you could coach a sport you could move here and coach cricket 
I have no clue. I, I remember when I first got exposed to lacrosse. I'm like, why are these guys running on? Why are those guys running off? You can hit somebody with the stick. Like, what is this? Like, I tell you, I had that stick. I'd be, I'd be in prison, right? I don't know what I'm, but I identify a high level coach. When you get into to high level cheer, there are high level, motivating, accountable, hardcore coaches mm -hmm. who have turned 100%. into be some of the coaches that I respect the most because it's not easy to coach that from what I've viewed of what I've seen. No, absolutely. no it's different uh, moving parts. hundred percent. It is. Very different. There's a, um, there, very, like you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I, to me, and I, I get that all, all team sports are very involved, but I've always said that cheerleading is the ultimate team sport. If you go on the wrong count, like you're, you're colliding with someone, if you get the wrong grip, like the stunt's going to fall, like it takes one wrong move for a whole thing to come down one side of the this little group doing some hard what's called a prep where they hold them right at you know at chin level and they're connected to another group and they got a base that steps out well that base is connected to this flyer that's connected to this flyer that's you know there's a whole you know array of things that can happen and it has like we've watched you know there's all types of bloopers and i, I hate to even call it a blooper i mean it's i've seen some really bad hits and tumbling i've seen some really bad crashes uh, in stunting and where our sport was very unregulated for such a long time. Um, you know, and we got a bad rap, you know, uh, even uh, looking at it from a school standpoint where schools really look to go higher in-house. So they want to hire someone that's already at the school. They don't want to pay a, a, another uh, actual qualified coach. Uh, and they'll go to these summer camps where they learn like game day material. And then they take this material and and they that's like what they're using all season long like they don't know how to teach stunts they don't know proper grips they don't know proper technique uh, they don't want to work hand in hand with the training facilities because they look at it as a conflict which is odd, that's odd to me because for me as an all-star coach or even all-star choreographer you know um, but from a coaching standpoint if that's something we don't offer I would never tell a kid not to go to your school like you don't get Friday night lights where I'm you know with me Go do that. That's an opportunity that like, why would I take an opportunity away from a kid? Yeah. And that's what I, that I, I just don't understand. What do you that, mean unregulated? That, that, what do you mean unregulated? Um, it was unregulated. Uh, no, like, um, and now technically there's a quote unquote government, like we don't have a governing body. We don't have a, there are rule systems that people do buy into and follow mm -hmm. now, but we didn't really have that, you know, they're like, so gymnastics has the U S um, is it the USAG or, um, USGA is, uh, anyways, they have an association where they have to follow guidelines and there's a, a scoring system and, and everyone's bought it and it's been there for years. We didn't have that um, at all. When I got into cheerleading, you could go compete where you wanted, depending on the competition you went to, would depend on the rules that you had to follow. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was just, it, it was the wild, wild west. So, <laughs> in all honesty, you know, to me, that kind of seems like, because obviously it's dangerous, right? I mean, it, it, it can it can be dangerous, right? I think any sport can be dangerous, right? It's kind of like a football coach yeah. that doesn't teach kids how to tackle correctly, right? I mean, you get concussions, broken necks if you don't teach kids. Like, I see coaches, they spend a lot of time teaching kids how to tackle correctly in football, right? Yeah. If you don't teach people how to cheer correctly. Listen, I've seen a little 95-pound girl drop three people high, right? I've seen them hit the floor, yeah. right? And it, and yeah. I've, seen, I've seen girls quit cheer. I've seen girls go, I don't want to do that anymore. Like... Yeah. Cause, cause they have the, the little bit of the PTSD of falling and they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. I fell. It could have been a lot worse. I'm done. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, me and you got connected obviously through Randy, but one of the things that we connected off was the, the fitness industry, the bodybuilding industry, right. There were the, the getting big. I don't know if I was ever in the body. I, I was in the getting big, right. We talked about nutrition and working out. And we always wanted to to work out together when you lived here. And just most of it was we just hung out, right? We just absolutely out and work out. That's what 90% of it was. It's like, <laughs> and now it's just, hey, just come hang out. And like, you're either at the gym or you're eating. Or, and we always talked about nutrition and eating. And you kind of self-educated yourself on a lot of that, right? Just being around that. And then it moved into another career, right? I mean, you do multiple things. You have a very small niche where you work with people who want to be in the competitive fitness, competitive bodybuilding, that industry, right? And 
Talk a little bit about that because, man, if talk about a business that's room for, I've competed before. I've, I've known multiple people that have competed at a high, high level. Um, I used to joke around with a friend of mine that, um, and she knew I was kidding, but uh, she used to talk about the hardest thing in the world in the world is to carry a pregnancy and give birth. And I was like, I did a 20 week diet for a bodybuilding show. I can, <laughs> I can do a, you know what I'm saying? Like just messing with her. Right. But um, the, the amount of mental fortitude it takes to compete in bodybuilding, I tell people, or a physique level, um, one, it can be very lonely. That's a lone, it's a lonely spot when you're dieting, right? It's a lonely oh, man. spot. Yeah. And um, the amount of discipline it took, the very little room for air. I've seen people look great and 12 hours out from a show, something goes wrong and they get on stage and they look horrible, right? Um, very common. Very, talk a little bit about how you got into that niche. Because now, Donnie, I see you going from posting yourself and when you compete to now you're sharing people, people that are, are dieting that look phenomenal. Like, talk about that. And me and you both know uh, um, somebody that's very good in the industry, Marion Benton, who's, who, who's yep. pretty, like, I mean, in South Carolina, if you don't know Marion Benton is in bodybuilding, you might not be from South Carolina. Like, the dude was Mr. Everything, right, right for the longest or you're, time. You're, or you're not really into bodybuilding. Or you're not really into bodybuilding, <laughs> right? Cause, cause, and he was just, he was just. Uh, 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 oh, Mr. South Carolina. Yeah, and I tell people he was like the South Carolina version of like Flex Wheeler back in the day, right? Just unbelievable. 100%. Just aesthetic, he diet for six. I mean, just a freak, right? And okay. really good dude. Talk a little bit about how you got into that niche of working with competitive bodybuilders. And it seems like something you have a big time passion for. Um, I, I do have a really big passion. Um, I, you know, first and foremost, I, I probably like to touch on the fact that like, you know, these are gifts that, uh, from God, like there's nothing I'm doing right now that he's not lighting the path and I'm just kind of following along. Yeah. Um, you know, cause I, I can want to do these things all day long and I've, you know, I've tried my path and then, you know, <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, you know, man. you know, yeah. I ended up, yeah. which is not great. Yeah. So first yeah. and foremost, um, I, I, I just feel blessed that he's been giving me these tools, these gifts, uh, putting people like Marion Benton, putting people like you, um, you, you know, cause, uh, and you don't know, you might not know it, but you've, you've, um, you've influenced me a lot in things that I've learned about, um, transforming bodies, uh, nutrient, nutrient timing, um, and different things like that. Uh, I actually hired Marion to prep me for a, a show. So I, I've learned from my coaches. I talked, I actually talked to Marion this week. Yeah. Um, it's nice. Um, you know, I still call him coach. Yeah, he's yeah, a phenom yeah. he's a phenomenal guy, you know, take yeah. bodybuilding out of it. Um, having people like that, having people like you um, in my life are just, just, just a blessing. So I, I, I think that's the biggest resource I've had. Um, I've taken time to get on, on the internet and shift, uh, sift through, a ton of information. And then I, I feel like it just maybe takes a lot of critical thinking to figure out what's applicable, what's true, what's false, what, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it, I feel like once you're around it long enough, you can look at something and be like, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same with like, when I see someone doing a movement in the gym or a variation on a machine, I'm like, Oh, I need to ask about this. Cause yeah, yeah. I need to know the ins and outs. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you see yeah. something and it, and it, and it, and it resonates. And I think that's been the biggest thing for me um, is one, I, I, I've been blessed to have a lot of uh, really smart people around me um, throughout, throughout bodybuilding. There's been things that I didn't like about some of my preps. So things that I didn't like, I was like, these are things I want to avoid, you know, when I'm, when I'm training other people. Um, and then obviously, if you're looking at actually being truly competitive in the bodybuilding world, then you're looking at PEDs, mm -hmm. um, which was the biggest thing that honestly, that was what held me back from uh, from doing any type of coaching, because that's a very large response. That's a big responsibility to mm -hmm. have um, that weight on your shoulders, because that's someone's health. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I've seen I've seen things. Um, I've actually taken on people because of how unsafe the protocols that their coaches had them on mm -hmm. like they had them on amounts that like mm -hmm. they use they use more than that to beef cattle up or they use they they were using yeah. more than the amounts that they used to beef cattle i was like yeah that's not safe um so I, I i think that's the biggest thing is i care about my athletes 
Um, I have a working relationship with them. I don't go in and say, it's not my way or the highway. There's always a personal choice. Mm. Um, I'll always, I'll always tell them, Hey, this is what I think is best. You know, then we've got financial obligations. You know, this is an expensive sport that does not have any, you know, you're not making any money off of it. Um, mm. unless you're at a very high level with very high sponsorship. So, I mean, can we really call it a sport? Uh, or is it really an expensive hobby that takes a lot yeah. of dedication, a lot of, um, digging in and, and a lot of mental fortitude. Absolutely. Um, I feel like maybe hard to call a sport, but I'm fine with saying it's a sport. I, I'm not trying to argue that point one way or yeah, another. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, but my main thing is I, I want to mentor my guys. There's life. The, the biggest thing is there is life after bodybuilding. So mm. anything that we're doing, um, I would never put anybody in a situation where it's not something that we can't walk back really easy. Mm. you know uh i want to someone else. i'll tell you being 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 in that industry at a very young age um that's not a common mindset it's an all or nothing go till you die compete 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 shredded 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 who's willing to do what's the necessary the most <laughs> who's willing to do the most who's willing to go to the most extreme um and one thing they lack in that industry man is um there's a lot of people who come out of this industry with severe eating disorders. 100%. Severe eating disorders, man. Um, I created a very unhealthy relationship with food. I created body dysmorphia because you look at yourself and then you look at somebody next to you, you look on stage, it's a constant, it's a constant business of comparison, right? Yeah. Almost to the point where like, man, I, I some of the things I've heard judges say to people, I'm like, oh my God. Well, you can't be on. You're fat on stage. You're that girl's. That girl's not fat. First off, but they're just comparing her to somebody. She's not fat, right? Like if, and, maybe compared know. to the girl. Maybe compared to the girl at four percent body fat. Yeah, maybe that, she's that's seven. Still not, that's still she's not. seven. Yeah, they're like, oh, you're fat. How dare? How dare? Yeah. How dare? How dare, how dare yeah. you be seven percent body fat and step yeah. on my stage? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you you hear that in that industry all the time. But I mean, I think that industry does need people that care that care about people right because um there is a listen i don't think anybody who's been in the industry a very long time will tell you that that's an industry around health it's hard there now there are healthy people i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to paint a big brush there are right, right. But, no but I, you, I get what you're saying yeah for you as a coach that can say hey i'm not i'm I, I'm always going to tell my my people there's life beyond this. We're never going to back up more. Like, have you ever had a client that wanted to work with you and you go, yeah, I'm not sure if it's the best option for you to step on stage. I'm not sure you want to go down this route. Have you ever had that conversation? You know what? I just recently, and I, I was kicking myself in the butt. Um, I had a guy who was super dedicated. Um, he's in the army. And you know, just his job in general is just super stressful. And um, he, we ended up, we ended up just having literally just this week, we he ended up um, pulling out of the competition mm -hmm. um, that we we're coming up on. Um, and I apologize to him because I was like, you know what, as your coach, I should have had this conversation with you when I saw you a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 I'm always, you know, I read the, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the extreme ownership mm -hmm. yeah. book. Oh. Um, and I, I, I try, even though I, I might miss it in the moment, <laughs> I'll at least try to, <laughs> might take me a couple of days to figure out it was my fault, but I, I figure it out eventually. And, but no, immediately I, I, my heart sunk because, you know, I, his health does matter to me. And he had a scare in the hospital, had nothing to do with what we were doing, yeah. but was still just overall, it was stress. He was overworked. Um, and it had everything to do with his job, but clearly what we're doing is adding to that, even mm -hmm. though we weren't the direct catalyst mm -hmm. to that. Um, it's still to, I, 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 you'd have to be really ignorant to the, to ignore the fact that like what we're doing isn't very stressful on the body. I mean, to the point that like I have, when we get close to bodybuilding shows, you know, three, four weeks out, my guys are checking in with me every morning, mm -hmm. every, every morning. I want their mm -hmm. weight. I want their photos. How are you feeling? Yeah. Um, or did you, how did you sleep? Uh, you know, how's your stress levels? And that's what we're getting to the point that we're just managing stress and recovery 
um, that close to the show and trying to keep up the intensity and different things like that. So yes, I have had that. And, and me, I'm, I'm actually a very new bodybuilding coach. Um, it's wild because I, I just, I just put a guy on stage two weeks ago um, who wasn't even my client. He came to me, he came to me um, two weeks out to, to peak him. He had won the amateur Olympia. Um, he's genetically gifted mm -hmm. and uh, he wanted to go for his pro card. And I'm like, you know, it was a big risk. It's, it's, you know, it's playing, you know, not knowing, not, not knowing his body, not knowing how foods react to him, not knowing what he's done up to this point. What's his intensity in his training? How's his cardio been? What, you know, all of those things, there's so many moving parts to this that it's, you know, it's a gamble. It is a gamble taking this on because it's either a, I'm going to, we're going to knock this out of the par park and he's going to be really happy or B, um, I'm going to, you know, blow it. And then that could kind of really, that could damage my, you know, my position as a, a bodybuilding coach, because he's very well known locally. He's got a decent following on Instagram. So the last thing I would need was be like, yeah, don't use this guy. He doesn't know how to peek you. Oh, but wow. yeah. we had, you know, but we had the conversation, but the reason I took it, he's like, I understand you don't know my body. I understand we might nail, not nail this. Um, and so I, it, it was, it was very, 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 very stressful. Um, but he got perfect scores from the front. Nice. They, they only marked him off on his back. Um, and in my opinion, it was posing. Not that I think he did anything yeah. bad. It just could have been better. Yeah. Um, especially when you're standing up against other genetically gifted people, you know, everything matters. <laughs> yeah. And so, but they're like, your conditioning was spot on. So it, it, you know, it was great. So like in 12, and so in 12 days I had him. So we started on a Monday, he stepped on stage the following Friday and, uh, and we dropped 12 pounds. Oh. And if we, I've got a, I've got a side by side photo, and the twelve pounds down, he looks twelve pounds bigger. Yeah, his waist is tighter, his chest yeah. is full. It's crazy. Yeah. So things yeah. like that. So I know it's a little off topic to what you asked, but no, I get just it. going into like those those things are, um, you just have to be real careful because also like you know that's another dangerous part of the sport where you're getting in, you're manipulating water. A lot of people will yeah. cut it completely. Um, you're manipulating water, you're manipulating salt, you know, you can be mineral depleted or deficient in, in a lot of things. So, you know, cramping up, locking up too low body fat. I mean, I've, there's been people that go to the hospital, um, during peak week over just really poor decisions. So, yeah. Yeah. um, putting people's health at the forefront, um, has got to be a priority. So I definitely learned a, I learned a lesson this week, um, with, with my guy, um, that, you know, and everything was, everything was, uh, was okay, but we, we kind of actually like butted heads over some things. Yeah. Uh, and that was what kind of steered us, uh, to not finish the competition. Um, and then come to find out, you know, he was dealing, he went to the, he went to the doctor, got some tests and he had something, something in his blood with, uh, and it was, it, it, again, it was stress related mm -hmm. from my understanding, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah. Great. I tell you, I tell you, we can tell. One of the things I think where me and Donnie became such good friends is um, me and Donnie have similar personalities in that, like, is that what you're about to say? No, because to? I'm, I'm sitting so, here listening and like, yeah. I, I love yeah. fitness. Like I, I love it yeah. through and through. Yeah. And I will, I will try just about anything, but it takes such a different mindset yeah. to be so obsessed with fitness. That it's like your entire life. That's all you do. So yeah. I, I hear like this all or nothing. Yeah. That's where me and Donnie, that's where me and Donnie yeah. are similar, right? Me and Donnie yeah. are similar in that. Um, once it's either one way or the other though. it is right bro. It's black and white it's black and white if i if i'm not going if i'm not going this way i'm going this way and it's yeah, yeah route, there's and I, no i can't there's no can't. middle ground there's but no it's, middle it's ground. always Brody, i love i love to talk yeah. about it because i think i mean yeah. obviously like our mental health plays into so much like how our decisions come about yeah. and so it's always interesting to hear because i do feel like i am so right in the gray area yeah. i'm not black or white i am so in the gray yeah. that it's always interesting for me to hear like a very black mindset and a very yeah. white mindset and me and him know? i think that where we like me and him we have very some very similar stories some very similar struggles and i think it's always good to to have a friend like that because yeah. it's like like 
do for instance when i first got one tattoo at 18 i was like i'll get this one tattoo i'm good and all of a sudden i'm like 80 percent covered right like <laughs> i got involved in fitness and i was like yeah i'm just gonna work out because i want to meet chicks when i'm in college and all of a sudden i'm on state right all of a sudden it's my career all of a sudden it's my life right like yeah i got involved in jiu-jitsu i was like yeah i'm gonna do it to kind of get in shape and all of a sudden i'm traveling to california to compete you know what i'm saying it's like there's no there's no there's there's, there's, no, there's no middle ground there's no middle but ground i've, I've told problem, you this too josh guys, yeah no, I was just going to say, I've told you, I, I think it's so admirable how much you dedicate to what you do, because yeah. like we talked about in our previous podcast that you've been tracking every day for eight years now, Yeah, every day for eight years. that, that there's, it's, oh, there's God. people might yeah. think it's crazy, but there's yeah. so much admiration for it because of how competitive you are with yourself. Yeah. A lot of people don't have that mindset. No, I think me and Donnie are both very similar like that. And that yeah. like, like. You know, and, and it is, Donnie, I'm like you, like people are like, well, why don't you find that happy medium? And I remember I said this, I said this actually in counseling, to my counseling one time. Um, and he's like, and this guy like knows, knew everything about me. And he's like, well, he's like, listen, tracking eight day, eight years out of the way, like having anxiety when you miss a day you're supposed to go to jujitsu because somebody thinks something gets in your schedule and it's supposed to happen that day and it gives you anxiety he's like that's all the same problems that caused all your other problems you're just working in a space that's safer for you and yeah. it's okay for yeah. you to be in. like <laughs> like you still have all the same things you've just learned to take that and focus it into something that's not self-destructive and horrible. And I think for a lot of people, it's coaching, mm -hmm. right? Coaching other people. It's because there's discipline there. You're, you're demanding the best of other people. It's fitness, right? It's fitness for people because, listen, I don't care what you say. You're having a bad day. Go kill yourself with a leg workout and tell me if your day's not a little bit. You're in, or just go like outside for yeah. a five minute walk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do something, so fine. right? Because <laughs> yeah. if it's not in that I don't know. I kind of prefer not being able to walk out. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, yeah. no. Yeah, right. Because you crush your legs and you're just yes. like, I'm dying. There's well, nothing better. Life there's is better. Nothing better. Life is better. And there's some life is better. Because for me, if I don't head, if I'm not on that route and I veer one inch to that side, listen, I'll go to the other direction, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's, it's not good. Fast, yeah. fast, good. fast, fast, bro. Fast. And I have to have people in my life that are like, mm, you need to, it's like, yeah, I need to back up. I back mean, up. I can yeah. do that with, I can do that with pancakes. So just imagine <laughs> with like, we start, I, I have a <laughs> severe breakfast addiction. It is you can ask ask my daughter. Dude, he sent like, me like what he ate for breakfast, and I'm like, dude, how much time did you have to eat that? I'm like, that's thirteen hundred. How many calories pancakes is it? How many? <laughs> I find, well, I mean, to be fair, like I burn calories putting in that much effort to eat those. Oh yeah, 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 so yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You burn the thirteen hundred yeah, calories yeah. before you eat Every it. Every time I'm sitting, I was sit I actually went to my favorite breakfast place yesterday, and I'm like, oh, here I go, sweating again, eat my damn breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But I want to. You you said something that I want to touch on, and it, it it resonated because I saw a clip yesterday of Andy Frisella. And you said that someone said, can you find a, can't you find a happy medium? And he gave, he basically was talking about balance. And that's what I would think I would associate medium with. And he was like, there's no one's given trophies for balance. Yeah, no yeah, one's yeah, getting yeah, paid. Yeah, no one's getting pay raises for balance. And I think that my, and it, it's, it's so, I saw that. And I was like, God, he's so right. Yeah. He's right. He's right about a lot of things, but no, he, no, he, you know who he is, right? Gray. You know, yeah. 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 75. Yeah. So my, uh, a buddy of mine's a coach, and um, a lot of people are like, man, he's obsessed coach. He's crazy. And one thing I always tell him is like, hey, man, don't let those people who tell you you're an obsessed coach get in your brain. They're confusing passion for obsession. But also, like, what's the you're issue with obsession when it coach. comes to this? You know, there, it, like obsession is to me when you're obsessed with what you do, there's no issue with that. Yeah. When you're obsessed with fitness and like being healthy, there's no issue with that. It's that's, you know, I don't, I don't understand calling that obsessed. Yeah. Right. I think, yeah, it, it, you can be passionate. Mm -hmm. I, I think mediocre, call, mediocre people call pick, it obsession. Right. Agree. Exactly. Pick, pick any sport. Yeah. Pick, pick any sport, pick any sport, pick any career, any, any industry, anybody that's at the top of their game is obsessed or obsessed. Have to be. Yeah. Or 
that they, what they're not finding is balance. You mm -hmm. know, what would, how much use nutrition? How well would your nutrition go if you were being, well, I don't find balance. Balance is 50, 50. So I'm going to eat crap 50% of the time that makes me happy and then eat the other wow, stuff. Where would we point. be? That's a good point. You know, we would be, yeah. we, we, what we wouldn't be is balanced. We would be very unbalanced. Right. Have you, yeah. you guys no. ever watched the Michael Jordan um, documentary? They did. No, but there's someone, there's someone else that tells it. They were, that was yeah, just, we're just talking the, about it. They're like, the, what was the, it called? Uh, dream. I, I, I can't remember what it was. The sex episode came out during COVID. Yeah, and I, I think and I people watched it. people watch that and they're like, "Wow, he was a psychopath." I go, "Yeah, he was." I said, "If Michael Jordan was a serial killer, he'd make Ted Bundy Ted Bundy look like a Boy Scout, right?" Because he yep. was obsessed with and and it, and people get lost in this word. Oh, obsessed. Well, he's a little crazy. Oh, he's a little too intense. Man, I, I I'm not hearing that anymore, bro. Like, I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing that anymore. I, I get aggravated by that because those people, the, it's mediocre. It's mediocre to me. Now, can you be unhealthy? Yes, you can. Right? Can can you be can, can you be unhealthy? But like I, like you said, right? Nobody's giving pay raises for media for for right. what do you say? Nobody's, for no one's giving a pay raise for for, for balance. balance. For yeah. balance. For being balanced. Right. Like I, why do you have why like I don't understand why people strive for mediocrity. Like I I why would you want that? And your life, like it, it's been, it's been made so okay to be mediocre at stuff. Well, and you know, that's different when it's a hobby, but when it's life, like, why do you want to be mediocre? This, this goes into something I feel very, very strongly about. Um, sadly, I think it's not their fault. Um, I, mm. I, you know, how did they grow up? What were they taught? Oh yeah. What, how, yeah. Were, how were their parents, what were their parents, how were their parents influenced? You yeah. know, I've, you know, going out, I mean, Think about how the, the clients that you deal with. I had a 38 year old not know that oatmeal was a carb. Yeah, 100. percent And yeah. it's definitely there's nutrition. Yeah. There's yeah. nutrition yeah. education. Yeah. Like, it blows your mind, right? Blows yeah. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Education no, is an me, issue. He texts me. So we're doing carb cycling. He literally texts me. He's like, "Man, this oatmeal and peanut butter combo is awesome." I go, "It sure is." Isn't it a no carb day? He's like, "Yeah." Like, so why are you eating oatmeal and peanut butter? It's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, oatmeal, oatmeal's a car. I'm like, yeah, look at the, look at the, look on the yeah, nutritional yeah, label, yeah, bro. Yeah, read the label, bro. Yeah. I, yeah, I, and, I, had tell, I had to tell my dad the other day that peanut butter is not a protein source. Yeah. But, uh, oh, is that, is that, that is so, dude, I have so many people be like, well, I'm going to just get something in the morning, but I'll eat a little bit of peanut butter for, 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 for breakfast for protein. And, and when I first started coaching people, I kind of thought they were joke, like they're messing with me. And I'm like, oh no, they're serious dead no they're for real because it has a little know. bit of protein in it it yeah. has a little bit of protein or someone told them nuts have protein right or or, or you know, and that's serious one thing i do want to circle on too is is um one thing that i'm big upon is and me and gray talk about it all the time and i still deal with people who do this and and i'm through through my self-help i'm trying to have more grace and mercy and empathy right I'm trying to understand yeah. where people come from, from their point of view, right? Without blurting out just mean, or, or just trying to understand. I, I read something, uh, when you start looking at the world through um, perspective and not perception, how you treat people changes. And that stuck in my head. If you treat people through the eyes of perspective and not through your own perception, you start to treat people differently and understand people better. And... Um, one of the hardest things I struggle with is, um, Donnie, we, we said we want to talk about it, is people that don't re take responsibility for their own crap. And they learn that they take things, that whether it happened to you as a kid, or whether it's trauma you grew up with, whether it's things, things that we go through life, the struggle, whether they're our own choice. I have a big belief that there's, there's been nothing that has messed me up that hasn't been my choice. <laughs> like, dude, like, I had a yeah. pretty good life growing up really good life people are like oh well maybe it was your parents well i wish i could blame my parents holy crap right but it's yep. me i screwed it up right and you talk about listen you've had struggles you've had mental health things we've i've had mental health things we've gone through things but ultimately where i'm at in life if i'm not in a bad spot is my fault and when i hear people say oh you got to kind of give that guy a break um you know he's got a lot of mom issues we all got mom, bro. 
We all got mom yeah, issues. Bro. I got a I got a big mom issue. I lost my mom last year. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We, yes. You know. Right. Yes. I, and know, I remember. And so, yeah. And but you said so you I, want to talk about like. Oh, gotta absolutely. Using, we like, gotta quit and, using those as our excuses to not be successful, and we gotta stop using those as our excuses for why we're not performing to our our max potential as people. Yeah. It's 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 on us. We have I want to, to touch on your perspective. Shit. I, yeah. I want to touch on the perspective and we'll get right into that. I, I agree wholeheartedly. One thing I would kind of, you know, that's through all of this. So, you know, the, and I could, I could really, I could go back to about two years when I really started to recognize certain things happening in my life. Um, but those things happened, you know, no, no details needed, but it led me back to the Lord mm -hmm. and there was no light shining down miraculous, any, you know, but what I wholeheartedly feel I've been blessed with um, through me working on myself, not mm -hmm. sitting here just so that anything that you're going to get from the Lord or you're going to get in this world, you know, many gifts or blessings you have to work for. Um, and so I've been working on myself through some of these trials. And the one thing I feel that has come out of it is perspective. And it's not. And what I don't do is I don't look at it through everybody else's eyes i try to look at it through the lord's eyes because he was perfect and how he treated people is how we should all be treating people mm -hmm. at the end at the end of the day mm -hmm. which in turn will should give them grace mm -hmm. uh it'll give you the humility in the in those situations uh and it'll allow you to navigate much easier um and, and a lot of times i know that people get real finicky when you start to bring up jesus or god or anything like that and um, I, I'm able to navigate these situations with that perspective without ever having to really bring it up. Um, mm -hmm. But, but also, you know, people that have known me in the past, uh, you know, even my ex-wife, she's commented, she's like, you've really had like things that I mean, and here's the thing, my initial react, my initial thought process or my initial feelings on things don't change. I still feel the same way. Mm. I, I just, I, I just am able to respond or I'm, and, and again, I would say respond versus react. I'm able to respond versus react in a much um, more beneficial manner, beneficial to, to both of us in the party, especially like say if I'm dealing with my daughter, you know, it, it's beneficial to both of us because when we butt heads, we butt heads and it's bad. Um, and I, I take responsibility for those things, but going into the mental health side of things, I've, I've been diagnosed with an outburst disorder. So you can see how I react to things yeah, versus yeah, respond, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, ADHD, mild PTSD, um, major depressive disorder. Um, there, it was a, there was a list of things. Um, and I think I talked to you about it and you, you had asked me, so like when I got tested, the reason I, I, I do believe in these things, cause there are a lot of stuff that I, I'm like, eh, I don't believe this. Yeah. But yeah I yeah. do believe it because I, I went to, there was a third party. So it wasn't going there. They weren't selling me anything. They weren't saying, okay, now you can sign up these sessions with our doctor. No, I literally went, all they do is they do testing and they give you options. Like, Hey, if you want to go this route, these are some things that you can look at. If you, there was nothing past that, that involved me, any type of any transaction. So I mm -hmm. felt pretty big. And, and when they, when they label these honest, things, I guess. It felt yeah, when they label these things, it also made sense to me. I was like, Oh, that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, instead of using that as a crutch and now I'm able to, it's okay that I'm doing these things because I have an outburst disorder. It's okay that I act this way because of my ADHD. It's okay. It's not, um, it's not, you yeah. almost never, yeah. it's, it's not, but what I, what I appreciate about the diagnosis is now I can recognize these things and I can work on them. Am, I, am I cured? Exactly. Am I cured? Am I healed? Probably not. Because I still, again, I still have those same emotions. I still have those same feelings. Mm -hmm. I still have those same thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, but recognizing these things um, and then also putting a lot of work in and a lot of, you know, a lot of prayer and a relationship, um, working on my relationship with him has, has blessed me to be able to navigate differently through these situations. And I hear it all the time. Um, and now I think stuff like, like I, I, I've got a quite a few kids that I'm coaching now that are on the spectrum. I think that's a little bit different, mm -hmm. um, than, you know, just the ADHD, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, but knowing those things also allows me to be able to, doesn't mean I give them special treatment, but it might mean that I'm, I give them a little bit more grace in, mm -hmm. in a situation, or I might be able to, instead of like, I might pull them aside and have a conversation with them. So I, I don't trigger anything, um, yeah. and things like that, but yeah. I hear all 
the time like oh i can't do this because of my adhd oh i can't do this because of my mental health oh, oh. and and at the end i think the the hard part is um the power of our words mm. the power of our words um and, and people don't understand they just don't understand so i will never say you are unless it's positive unless it's something positive i'm never going to say you are something mm. or you, you know what I mean? And I also have corrected myself with saying, so I used to say anything in administrative, I'm just terrible at now. It, 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 and it, it was true. And you know what? It just got worse because I just kept saying those things. Mm. And so I would say, you know what? I have to work on my administrative skills because I've, you know, I've been struggling on these things. I word things different. So I don't say I am anything unless it's a positive. I don't say anything, you know, negative in those sorts. So when people say these, and this goes to, you know, when you're talking about people in the, I'm sure you've used this, or I've used it in cheerleading a lot, that if you, you know, whatever you say is true. If you say this about you, like I can believe it, you say it, you believe it, yeah. A hundred percent. You only know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. And so if you fully, but like, I can't talk you out of you believing that, that's something that you have to work on for yourself. So if you say, I can't do this because of, because of A, B, and C, then you're, you know, you're correct. And you're always going to be, you know, crippled by A, B, and C versus mm -hmm. using that as a, like, you know what, I've got A, B, and C. Um, how can I, you know, how can I work around this? How can I manage this? How can I, you know, uh, there, I mean, there's a lot of different things, you know, yeah. but I think the, the positive self-talk and not using it, you know, I, I don't think I've ever, I've ever told somebody outside of a conversation of us talking about mental health that I was diagnosed with these things. I don't just say, I, I've never, I've never gotten trouble by a boss or I've never, you know, you know, messed something up with a client or made a mistake with me, whatever. I've never, you've never heard me say, you know what, I'm sorry, I've got a major depressive disorder. Um, and I was, you know, and, and I couldn't get out of bed. Yeah. No, but you, you don't no. make it an excuse. Like you understand that oh, it is a part of absolutely. you, but it's not who you are. That's a big yeah. thing, Josh. And I think we work on like, I, something I really push with my clients constantly is doing hard things, whatever your hard thing looks like, because the more often that you do hard things, the easier those hard things get. So whatever your hard thing is, like sometimes for some clients, it's like going to do something by themselves because they don't like being alone, you know, yeah. or for some clients, it's trying a different workout, lifting weights, like whatever it may be. But that's a big part of it is the way that you break down that view of yourself as you push yourself to do something that is challenging because you'll find out that you're probably not that bad at it. Yeah. When, yeah, Erica, do it. when Erica came on, she lost 140 pounds. She said when she was 318 pounds, she goes, well, maybe this is just who I am. I'm big bone. And this is how God made me. Guess it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. And um, she told herself all these lies and people told her all these lies and she believed all these lies about herself until one day she stopped and decided she's not going to believe that anymore. Right. And, um, and I just don't think as, as I just think the level of accountability you have to have, regardless of what you bring to the table, I don't, I, I can't use those as excuses anymore. People can't use those as excuses. It's, it's self-limiting, right? Right. And it's, um, man, that's a, that's a trap you, you put people in with no hope. You mm -hmm. want to talk about accountability. So just based off, go, going off of what you just said. So I had a lady that messaged me. She was a mom from ACX. I coached mm -hmm. her daughter. Um, she was a fantastic lady. Um, she was also 370 pounds. Mm -hmm. She said, me, I want to, so I'm surprised I haven't cried yet. Um, I'm a crier. I'm like, I'm a crier. So welcome to the, the club yeah and, 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 and you know what and I, I welcome it I, I i know that in those moments whatever's happening to me is supposed to happen yeah you know yeah. and i don't i don't fight that yeah. yeah she messaged me yesterday she's 155 pounds holy crap she's lost over 200 pounds and all i did and, and she, she I, I there's absolutely no credit i can take in this yeah at all she reached out to me I gave her a macro plan. I gave her a food list. I was like, I just said, and here's the thing. I gave her some suggestions that I learned from you guys. Hey, get out and get some sunlight. Go walk. Go. Yeah. And these are things, and this is why I will always share, like when we talk about being in a space that might be saturated or yeah. we do the same things, I have no problem sharing what you guys do. No, I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I yeah. appreciate what you guys put out. Yeah. Um. You know what I mean? And I think that, it, it, and I learned from you guys. So why wouldn't, 
you know, I did, yeah. but man, uh, dude, her, like, she literally sent me a photo of her flexing. I was like, she's got a, she's got a bicep. She's got yeah, like, yeah. and the smile, you know what the best part about the picture was, mm. was her smile. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you could see, you could see the confidence in her. Like it wasn't even a smile. It was a smirk. She's like, look at this. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was so hyper. Team, I, and she, uh, 370 pounds to 100, 155 yeah wow. that's insane so, i tell you what dude on. you know the thing is though man think she about just took it so account that's the accountability that you were talking about she think took about it and she changes. ran with it yeah think about the changes she went through mentally at three mentally 250 then 200 then like it's 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 the process of the change right it's it's like the the it's like um like the the, the growing of the plant right like who she be like people see then and then they see yeah. now, but what people, a lot of people don't see is the process that went through to lose 220 pounds, right? Yeah. Who she became in that process. Like she's, dude, you can't tell her nothing right now. You can't, no, you can't say, you can't, you can't run a marathon. I'll run a marathon tomorrow. I had a guy one time, I said, um, I came up with this level one weight loss thing one time where it was like, um, quit eating your calories, stop eating fast food, drink water, go for a walk. And it was like, if you're super inactive and obese or heavy and you need to lose weight, I said, I just want you to do those things. Quit eating out. I think we threw high protein meals in there, like four or five things to change. And I had a guy hit me up on social media one time. It's when I just first started opening the account for like Phenom Nutrition. And I was like, hey, just do these things, you know, and rinse and repeat every day. Right. And like, I didn't hear from like, dude, I literally like sent him that and didn't even think about it. For like ever like i sent it to him i was like it's hard you won't do it right and dude like nine months later he hit me up she's like all right dude i'm down 80 pounds what do i do now and i'm like i go huh that's all awesome. he's, like, he's like yeah I, I did what you told me and now i'm down 80 pounds i feel like i need to do more i'm like well we have a free workout and start going to the gym it's like starts working out and i'm like another I'm like, 50 probably i'm like holy cow like People, people have paid me a lot of money to try to encourage them to do those things. This dude sent me a message and I knew him. I knew him through Ray. I knew him through Ray. And I get, I said, Hey, do these things. Nine months later, he loses 80 pounds. That's why I tell people when it comes to weight loss, you can't tell the wrong thing to the right person. You can't tell the right thing to the wrong person. I could give you everything you need unless you're ready. You won't do it. Right. Was the light bulb, the light bulb we yeah, talked the light about bulb recently. Off, right. I was, all, I, I was like that. Same. I, was, I, I had to be, it was always, you know, I, again, you know, my lifestyle was, was a lot of it. Like I love to go out and, you know, I was single for, I feel like most of my adult life, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so all I ever had to worry about was myself. So if I went out and I drank all my money away, then, oh, well, yeah. then that's on me. Like, I just yeah. had to worry about me. I didn't have a kid. I didn't have a, a yeah. wife. I didn't have any of these things. So um, I, I, I would I would start to work out. I remember doing P90X and I started to get in shape and then went out and started to drink. I would drink one night and then probably drank for like the next month. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, so right. that would all yeah. went out the window or I'd get sick. I'd get sick for like a couple of days and then I just never made it back to the gym. This was what I went through for, for years. Um, and it just took, again, you know, uh, it, it took some harder things to happen to me, but it was always, I was always had to be so fed up. And I even started saying it out loud because I recognized my pattern. I always had to be so fed up with how, so disgusted with how yeah. I looked that I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to get, get back. In the, right. And then finally, I, um, after my last battle that I just had, um, it was a four year long battle, four and a half. Um, it was a battle that cost me probably like about, five hundred dollars six hundred seven hundred dollars a week mm -hmm. um you know and uh when i got done with that i i was like uh, there's that's why i'm i am the way i am now those four years a hundred percent changed me and i used to say that i did i was like oh i did it all by myself i never went god help no. me. yeah um, yeah yeah, no, and I and I already know who was, you know, I already know yeah. who was looking after me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because there were so many things, there's so many things that happened to me that I was like, all right, now, you know, so now I will say, and again, I hate to even use the word balance, um, but I do go out and enjoy the things. If I want to enjoy something, I enjoy it. 
um, right now because I'm out of prep. Uh, I was in prep for nine months long. Well, you and, recently um, told me like, so I do hey, go, if my dad uh, wants to go to Outback. He's like, I just lost my mom. If my dad wants to go to Outback and eat. Bloom and onion I'm, all day. Bloom yeah. and onion because, I, <laughs> yeah. you know, you lose. Well, he's a Texas Roadhouse guy, but I. Uh, yeah, that's what he told yeah. me. Yeah. Texas, yeah. Texas, yeah. Texas Roadhouse. Texas, man, I can't, man, I'm trying to, t- I'm trying so hard to take him to this high end, you know, steakhouse. He's like, I just like Texas. He's like, man, you can't go wrong with Texas Roadhouse. That's my and grandparents. I Texas, <laughs> and I went to Texas Roadhouse like, damn, steak's not bad, bro. It's not yeah. bad. <laughs> but, like, but there's this bone in. $120 piece of meat that I would gladly go and pay for it at yeah, this day. Yeah. But the problem is, is there was a state, there was another place that was recommended to us by a friend and we went and it was trash. Yeah. So, so now me trying to, to get him to go out. and step out. Right, They're consistent, yeah, man. Dude. They're consistent. Yeah, dude. Dude, dude, my they dad, are. My dad just thought high end eating was Ryan's Steakhouse, bro, because he could just oh get all God. the food. Dude, I'm telling you, my, I, I, just, I don't know if it's that, that, that age group or whatever, but um, dude, I'm so glad we've been talking about getting you on to me and you are two of the people that like every time we talk and get connected, he's like, dude, why are we not like when you're in town? Like, how do we, we got to see each other or talk more. Like we're those type of friends. that's always like, like, no, there's we too many things more. to talk about too many things to know <laughs> about. Like, like what are we going to do? Man, we just sit there and talk forever and hang out. Right. Like, like, yeah. like dude, even when like you got that neck tattoo and like you showed you texted to me two days, three days ago, I'm like, I'm like, Ah, dog, man, he's going all out, and I'm a sissy. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, what's like, funny is I I have to talk myself through the tattoos, and my and like uh, my guy was he, and he talks about he's like, dude, you're just like you're one of my best clients. You sit so so good, but you know, to be fair, they're black and gray. They're not color, so yeah. it's a little easier to sit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not gonna sit there and be like, yeah, I could sit, but there's times I'm literally sitting there telling myself, I'm like women have this tattooed women have this tattooed. and no, that's I why I'm that like too. I'm like if they're I do that too yeah you know, yeah and not to not to knock women but like no but it, also, whatever like, you gotta they, do they, no. they birth they birth they birth they they birth yeah, they birth yeah. children so yeah. I'm I'm assuming that their pain tolerance is pretty yeah. legit and yeah. so I'm like I've done that with tattoos bro I've it. done that with tattoos when I got my back piece done I'm like millions of people have back tattoos you're telling me I can't yeah. suck it up dude and here I am laid over a table, drip sweating. You ever left you ever left a tattoo session mad? I would leave getting um, my back done. Cause I got so I got my back done. I'd go in every two weeks for two to three hours. Every two weeks. Okay. By the end of mine got done, it was like 10 sessions, right? It was like 40, 50 hours. I think I paid and walked out angry because I was so sick and tired of getting tattooed. It hurt. I was tired. Like I was so tired of it. But like when I I've gone into tattoo sessions where I'm like when I got the top of my feet done, people are like, oh that hurt. Top of the feet is horrible, bro. Absolutely. And I, and I did it where I I did my my left foot and then I already like paid to do my right foot the same day, like the next time. So I, I know it was horrible. It was, <laughs> it was one of the worst experiences. And I'm like, I've seen like little eighteen year old girls get their whole foot tattooed. And I'm giving myself this pep talk. And give myself but you, you guys have to remember like we're into you know like serial killers and murder mysteries and getting our feet tattooed like that's no, not dude. shit i watch disney channel <laughs> like we're good i watch, <laughs> I watch yeah. the disney channel all day long i watch i watched ferris bueller's day off today laughed and 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 i was something crazy was on after i can't watch i can't put it in my yeah. head yeah. y'all get y'all get to watch tv yeah dude, right. no. <laughs> no y'all get to watch Donnie, no. Donnie, kill me. but man no. i really appreciate you coming on um We'll share clips. We'll share this. It comes out Shoot, Monday. Today? Monday comes out the in like five eight. days, right? Yeah. Man. Um, and and I like, like I we tell, didn't even get to talk about everything. Like I tell people, I said <laughs> we can do it again. I tell people all the time. I say we'll do it again. Like I don't, I don't yeah. care. I just want to share. You know what it is? I know really. And, and I said someone's like, well, what, 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 uh, what got your podcast going? I said, dude, I know some really cool people. And like that's that's I really do feel like I know cool people and I want other people to meet cool people. And like there are really awesome, interesting people out there that I'm friends with because I've had people be like, Man, you got a weird array of friends, right? <laughs> like like I, like like Miss G's like she's like, You know Donnie? It's like Donnie's my dude. She's like, I can see you being friends with Donnie. Like that. Says it to me like that. 
Oh, I can tell you, man, Miss G, dude. I'm telling right. you, we could have a you could have a whole podcast about Miss G and how I gangster love her, she man. is. Dude. She is she's gangster. She is a hey, gangster. She is a, she is, she is. So I have a different breed across yeah, here, but yeah, I feel like yeah, Miss G yeah. is more fitting to have, yeah. have the tattoo because <laughs> she is scared to death of her, bro. Hundred percent. She walks in the room. I'm quiet because I'm like, did I do something wrong? Did I mess up? <laughs> right. But um, hey, we'll do it again. We'll launch it. I love you, man. I'm I, every time like like. When he t- called me a couple days ago, I picked up. I was at the pool. I'm like, Donnie, what's up? Like, what are we doing? How come we're not hanging all, out or talking? It's right? always, it's always a good time, man. Hey, I'm yeah, actually going to be back in Columbia uh, at the end of the month, and I'll, okay. I'll reach out to you. And we can, yeah, man. Uh, we can link up. Yeah, Thank you man. for having me. I appreciate uh, it, bro. Great. I want to always want to call you. I always want to call you Gaines. That's fine. You can do it. <laughs> he's great. He's I, great. I, he's I a great like area. It, yeah, yeah no, but I, I was like, if you're messing with Gray, you're getting gains anyway. So it really makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, it uh, Gray, it was a pleasure to finally meet you. Um, you, too. you guys are you guys are fantastic. Thanks again for having me on. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. All right. With all due respect. Uh-huh.